Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Melissa Crafter and I'm back again with another video. If you are new here, I upload weekly videos every Thursday where I show you how to make epoxy free custom tumblers. In this week's video, I'll be showing you how I created this V split tumbler using scrapbook paper. So if that's something that you're interested in, please continue watching. And as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask them in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you. So I started off with a prep tumbler. I do have a video on how to prep stainless steel tumblers. I'll go ahead and link it right here on the right hand corner as well as under in the video description. But um, I am going to be using this scrapbook paper um, to go ahead and add my design to my cup. I did purchase this scrapbook paper here at Hobby Lobby and I'm going to be doing a V split style tumbler. It was 69 cents and keep in mind that with one scrapbook paper you can do um, one to two cups depending on the design that you go for. So like I mentioned I am going to be doing a v-split tumbler using this scrapbook paper. So I'm kind of here just um, adjusting it exactly how I'm going to be putting it on my tumbler and then with a pen I'm just marking it um, so that I can cut it. Um, for this one, I did end up just um, folding the paper in half and then cutting the paper in half. That way I can um, have a, another piece left over if I do wish to make a similar cup. And using my X-Acto knife, I'm just going to go ahead and cut that in half and save the other half um, for future tumblers. And then as I mentioned, I can make two tumblers out of this one sixty-nine cent scrapbook paper. So I'm going to go ahead and place it, um, make sure that it's going to fit well, and then just kind of play with it until I know exactly where I want to place my um, scrapbook paper. Here what I'm doing is I'm kind of pressing down towards the rim of the cup. That way it can um, leave like a little bit of a dent. That way it can kind of give me a guide on to where the end of my tumbler is going to be. And then I am going to cut um, about half an inch above that line. That way I have less um, scrapbook paper to cut out once I do um, go ahead and glue it onto my tumbler. To adhere my scrapbook paper to my tumbler, I'm going to be using crystallized glitter glue. I will link this down below if you guys want to check it out. But you can also use Mod Podge if you don't have um, the glitter glue. Just if you are using Mod Podge, just be sure to allow it to dry um, for a little bit longer for around 48 hours um, since Mod Podge does dry really slow. So here I'm just going to use a Taclon brush to go ahead and brush on my um, my glitter glue onto my scrapbook paper and I want to get a good amount on there um, but I'm also keeping in mind that this is um, paper and you don't want to add too much to where your paper is going to rip. Now that I've added my glue to my scrapbook paper I'm going to go ahead and position it on my tumbler. Um, here I'm just trying to position it as straight as I could and then um, using my fingers I am pressing it down. Um, be sure to um, place it exactly where you um, want it before pushing down on the scrapbook paper. Um, if you do happen to misplace it just be careful with trying to lift it off um, because again remember this is paper and it can easily rip and the glitter glue kind of adheres um, quickly so you do want to be sure to um, place it where you really want to put it. going to be using my heat gun to kind of dry off that top part that top piece that was left up at the top um, dry the glitter glue that's on there um, that way it'll be easier for me to cut that piece off and align it with my with the rim of my cup um, I found that if you try to cut it with scissors um, while it's still wet it kind of just tears and it doesn't cu um, cut like in a straight line so here I'm just kind of drying it um, just a little bit and then I'm going to go in with my scissors and cut it um, to line it up with my so rim. So now that I've dried it a little bit, I'm going to go in with my scissors and cut um, going around the rim 
and cutting very small pieces at a time. If you do try to cut too much, I found that you can tear the paper and you definitely don't want that. You wanna cut it as straight as you can to align it to the rim. So this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm just going around um, making sure that my, um, that my scrapbook paper aligns with my rim and I'm gonna try to get it as close as possible to the rim of my tumbler. You do notice that some of um, the scrapbook paper that's near the rim is going to be lifting, but don't worry because we are going to adhere it using more glitter glue. So don't worry about that. At this point, just try to um, cut your scrapbook paper as close to the rim of your cup as you could, um, just as straight as you could. Now that that's aligned, I'm going to go in with more of the crystallite glitter glue and using my flat tackle on brush, I am getting um, the glitter glue in any of those parts that we're lifting. I'm getting it underneath the um, scrapbook paper and that way I can go ahead and try to adhere any of those parts that was lifting. Using my finger, I'm just pressing down on those parts. You do want to make sure that you do have a good seal near the rim. So I'm just using my fingers to try to press that down and get that sealed. This does take a little bit of time and a little bit of patience to go ahead and get that good seal up there near the rim. and then just continue adding um, a little bit of the crystallite glitter glue and here i am going with in with my heat gun just to try to get it to dry a little bit since it does dry tacky that helps with um, getting it to adhere near the rim i found that once i did hit it with the heat gun i pressed it down just a little bit more and then it was it had a good seal up there Now my scrapbook paper is on there and I have a good seal near the rim, I'm going to go ahead and seal the scrapbook paper piece. I'm going to seal it using the glitter glue again and I'm going to add a thin coat of it um, using my Taclon brush. I'm adding it on the entire piece and I did add two coats. I did seal it twice and I did wait two hours in between each coat to allow it to dry. Now that that has dried for two hours, I'm going to go ahead and glitter the bottom part of my tumbler. Do go in here with painter's tape just to kind of um, outline where I'm going to add the glitter. And I do cover the scrapbook paper just because I don't want any of the glitter on there. I do this just because I'm messy. You can. This is definitely optional. You don't have to add the, the painter's tape. Um, but I'm just adding the glitter on the bottom part where it's white and I'm going in and adding my glitter using glitter glue to spread out my glitter glue. I'm using, um, this wet and wild makeup brush. Um, you can purchase it say, at the Dollar Tree or I think Walmart has them. So I'm just squeezing a line of the glitter glue and I'm spreading it out using, um, my, my brush here. And I'm just making sure the entire bottom part is covered. I am going in with this glitter here. It's from Tom Thumb Glitters. It's called Green Pastures, I believe that's what it's called. And I do have a code with them. It's Melissa Crafter um, 10. You can find them on Etsy. I'll link them down below. You can use that promo code Melissa Crafter 10 so that you can save 10% off at checkout. This is a very light green color and since I didn't match my base color to my glitter I am going to need a second coat here of glitter so I'm going to allow this to dry for two hours before I dry add my second coat of glitter.
now that i've let my first coat of glitter dry for two hours i'm going to go ahead and add a second coat here i'm going in with a clean wet and wild brush and i'm just brushing off any of the excess glitter that didn't stick onto my cup and then i'm going in with the same brush and adding another coat of the glitter glue i'm going and just adding lines of adding a line of the glitter glue directly from the squeeze bottle and then spreading it using my brush you do want to make sure you don't have any streaks on your um, glue because if you do you will notice it once you do add your glitter so just add it on um, nice a nice coat of it making sure that you don't have any streaks and go ahead and add your second coat Glitter glue does require two hours of dry time in between each coat. So just be sure to allow your glitter glue to dry off completely for the two hours. Now that I've added my two coats of glitter, I'm going to go ahead and remove the painter's tape. I am do, being careful to remove it that way I don't um remove any of my scrapbook paper i do go off frame here a little bit um but i'm just removing my painter's tape and i have that perfect v-shape cut out and then i am going to allow this to dry for two hours when my second coat of glitter has dried off for two hours i'm going to go ahead and seal my glitter to do this i'm also going to be using the crystallite glitter glue it's awesome that we can use the crystallite glitter glue to go ahead and seal our glitter with sealing your glitter adds a protective barrier between your glitter and your bright tone to do this i am dipping my brush into a cup of water and then taking off any of the excess water to just go in with a damp brush to spread out my glitter glue with. I'm just adding just a little bit of the glitter glue and then using that damp brush, I am spreading out my glitter glue to go ahead and seal my glitter with. Wetting the brush just helps the glitter glue uh, glide on better on top of the glitter. The glitter glue does go on white, but it does dry off clear. So here I'm just making sure that I am covering all of my glitter with the glitter glue to make sure that I seal that very well and I have that protective barrier before I go ahead and add bright tone. Once I'm done here, I'm going to go ahead and allow this to dry for an hour and then I'm going to go in with some parchment paper to try to um, flatten down my glitter as much as I can. So after allowing that to dry for an hour, I'm going to go ahead and go in with some parchment paper and I'm going to go ahead and roll my cup in some parchment paper to try to flatten it down, flatten down my glitter as much as I could. I'm just going to go ahead and roll my cup and using my hands and the table, I'm just kind of pressing down on it. That way I can flatten the glitter as much as possible. After doing this, I am going to allow my glitter glue to dry for that additional hour so that it can total those two hours of dry time that is required for the crystallite glitter glue to dry well.
since this was a fine glitter that I'm using here, I did only seal my glitter using the glitter glue once. You can definitely seal it more than once if you do see that you have some glitter fallout or if you're using a chunkier glitter, I would definitely seal this twice. Um, the process would look exactly the same. Just allow this to dry for an hour and then go ahead and roll it in the parchment paper and then go ahead and repeat the sealing process um, again. So now I'm going to go ahead and start coating my cup using Bright Tone. Bright Tone is a water-based non-toxic top coat. You can purchase it at thecrystallacstore.com. I'll also link it down below. As I mentioned, it is a non-toxic top coat, so it can be used, it's safe to use even indoors. So now I'm going to go ahead and add my first coat of Bright Tone to start glossing up my cup. As you can see, we have no glitter fallout, so we're good to go on starting our Bright Tone coats. I did transfer my Bright Tone from the gallon to the condiment bottle just for easier application. And I'm going to go ahead and add my first coat of Bright Tone. Um, I'm going to just add a thin coat, making sure that my entire cup is covered in the Bright Tone. And I'm going to go ahead and add just enough to where it's not dripping. And I'm going to allow this to spin for an hour and then dry for an additional three hours don't film every coat that I give my cup just because every coat is added the same with bright toner you build up your gloss so you go ahead and continue coating until you are satisfied with your gloss finish um, it is thin coats that you're adding so as I mentioned you do um, build up your gloss with multiple coats the coat is added the same you go ahead and add a thin coat as I mentioned and then you go ahead and allow your cup to spin for an hour and then dry for an additional three hours and then I do sand every three coats just so that I, it can help smooth out my cup and it also helps with the overall amount of coats that you are going to need to achieve a glossy finish. So here's my cup after the third coat of Bright Tone has dried off. I did bring my cup outside and I'm going to go ahead and sand it down using 400 grit sanding paper. I am mostly sanding the bottom part where the glitter is just to kind of smoothen that part out a bit. After I'm done sanding my cup, I am going to just wipe it down using a lint-free cloth. Um, you don't want to wash your cup just to avoid any water exposure before your cup is cured. Um, so just go ahead and wipe it down using a lint-free cloth and then continue coating with Bright Tone. So after sanding and wiping down all my sanding dust, I'm going to go ahead and bring my cup back inside and I'm going to continue coating with Bright Tone until my cup is smooth enough. I am going to add some holographic strips here to my V-split tumbler. So I am going to continue coating until my cup is smooth enough for that. Um, I'm going to add a thin coat here and then allow my cup to spin for an hour and then dry for an additional three hours. So now that my cup is smooth enough, I'm going to go ahead and add these holographic strips onto my V-split tumbler. Um, I cut these out using my Cricut Explore Air 2. The measurements that I did for these were 0.3 for the width and then 9 for the height. I do have a previous video where you can see how I did these in Design Space. I'll go ahead and link that video down below. But I went ahead and made these using my Cricut and then I'm going to go ahead and place them on my tumbler. And then using um, an X-Acto knife, I'm going to go ahead and cut um, that extra, those extra pieces of the strip and then make it into a perfect V. I've added my holographic strips. I'm going to continue coating with Bright Tone. I'm going to add a thin coat and then I'm going to allow it to spin for an hour and then dry for an additional three hours. And I'm going to continue doing this until I'm satisfied with my gloss finish. 
Um, it's going to take a couple more coats to go ahead and cover up these vinyl strips and my cup should have a very nice glossy finish. So here is the final product you guys. I went ahead and added a few coats of bright tone to go ahead and cover the holographic strips that I added here. And then this is how the cup turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to ask down in the comment section. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram name is melissacrafter00. If you recreate any of these cups that I have um, made in any of my videos, go ahead and tag me. I would love to see them. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching.